Hi, I'm Jennifer Bassett from Driving Grade 5, and in this lesson, I'm going to talk to you about using children's literature books in social studies class. I love talking about children's literature books. I love reading to my fifth grade students, and I'm really excited to share how I use children's literature books and why I use children's literature books in my classroom. We all, adults included, love listening to stories. Our brains are attracted to stories. Oral histories have been passed down for thousands of years. And so I think that we are just hardwired to love listening to stories. So think about yourself. If you needed to learn about the Marquis de Lafayette, or Lafayette, however you want to say it, um, this guy here with George Washington, would you rather read an informational text, textbook style, or would you rather listen to a story about Lafayette? Personally, I'd rather listen to a story, and I think most of us would agree. Um, whenever we are listening to stories, it activates a different part of our brain, and students remember so much more when they're listening to stories and talking about those stories versus just reading out of a textbook or reading an informational text. In this lesson, while I talk to you about how and why I use children's literature books, I'm also going to show you uh, some of my favorites. This one is Revolutionary Farmer. It talks about the relationship between George Washington and the Marquis de Lafayette. And um, if you don't know, Lafayette was um, a volunteer Frenchman. He came over to help during the American Revolution. He would often spend his own money on food and supplies for soldiers. He was an amazing resource and help during the Revolution. So when I talk about read alouds, I use picture books for my read alouds. There are so many history and social studies themed books out there that you can use, but I find that it's best to use picture books because my students love to look at the pictures and they're also somewhat shorter. They're not usually super long. I can get through them in one lesson and also do other activities in that same class period. Chapter books are also wonderful. I do have a blog post on my favorite history themed chapter books and I will put the link in the comments or in the description. Um, what I do with chapter books is I implement history book clubs in my classroom, and students will use different chapter books to meet in their history book clubs. And the blog post that I'll link goes through all of those details and tells you how to set up those book clubs. So when you are reading children's literature books in your social studies class, it helps to activate students' background knowledge and build reading comprehension, of course. Um, students need to have um, what they already know, their background knowledge, brought to the front of their mind before they start working on a new topic or learning about a new event. This book, George Washington's Teeth, is perfect for activating background knowledge. It is a funny book. It has a lot of rhyming but it's not babyish. Um, my students love reading this or listening to this book um, because they are fascinated with George Washington's teeth. He struggled and had pain with his teeth for most of his life. And um, while being funny, this book um, talks about some of the events and happenings in George Washington's life that helps to activate that background knowledge, especially about the American Revolution and the First Presidency. Children's literature books bring history to life. 
One great example of this is Encounter by Jane Yolen. This book, um, it's told from the perspective of this Taino Native American boy. Um, the Taino people uh, encountered Christopher Columbus. This is Columbus here. We all know that Columbus did terrible things to the Taino people. Um, but this book gives the perspective of this little boy. And he has to use the vocabulary that he knows to be able to talk about what these newcomers have brought and what they're doing. And he's trying to warn his people that he doesn't trust them and these newcomers. And no one believes him, unfortunately. And we know that terrible things happened uh, when Columbus encountered the Taino people. One example of the, the rich vocabulary that is in this book, um, the, the little boy, he sees a mirror, a handheld mirror, and he calls it a round pool to hold in your hand that gives a man back his face. He doesn't know the word for mirror. He doesn't even have a concept of a mirror. He's never seen a mirror, but He's probably looked into a still pond before and seen his face. So he describes the mirror as being a round pool that gives a man back his face. You can see your face in this object. So several really great examples of um, using known vocabulary to describe an unknown object definitely brings history to life. Um, this book is amazing. Check it out. Um, picture books add a dimension to history that you just cannot get out of a textbook. This is Molly Banneke, one of my very favorite books. Molly was a young girl living in England. She was a uh, dairy maid, which means she milked cows on this very large manor. And one day she spilled milk. She was accused of theft and she would have been hanged, but she was able to read the Bible. And because she was able to read the Bible, her life was spared. She was sent to the colonies as a convict servant. So we, t we can talk about the difference between a convict servant and an indentured servant. Molly was very much treated as an indentured servant in Maryland. Um, she, she goes about her um, indentured servitude. That finally ends. She becomes a tobacco planter, a very small tobacco planter. And she does... She doesn't want to purchase an enslaved person, but she ends up purchasing an enslaved person to help her grow this tobacco. Um, and the story is amazing. My students asked me to read it over and over. It gives a really great view into indentured servitude and the colony of Maryland, tobacco farming, and a lot of other historical issues. And it's done in a very gentle way, perfect for fifth graders. Um, children's literature books help your struggling readers because if they can listen to a story, listen to a book being read, it takes that reading load off of them and they can just hear the content and consume the content and not have to worry about decoding and uh, figuring out how the words fit together and getting meaning out of the words. So definitely, if you have struggling readers, use children's literature books. It is, um, it's a great way to review and extend a topic, but it also helps those struggling readers. Um, your read alouds help students make connections. Um, this is John Paul, George, and Ben. This book is hilarious. It's um, John Hancock 
uh, Paul Revere, George Washington, Ben Franklin, and then there is a fifth, uh, Thomas Jefferson. The author says he's always off doing his own thing, which is so Thomas Jefferson, if you know him at all. Um, but this book, it, it talks about things that the Founding Fathers did in the American Revolution and in the new government in a lighthearted way. Um, ben Franklin, of course, has his witty comments and George Washington chops down the cherry tree. We know that's a myth, right? But it's um, a fun way to talk about George Washington's honesty. John Hancock likes to write everything really big. Paul Revere is very loud. Um, and, you know, that's from the Midnight Ride, of course. He had to be very loud. Um, but this book can help make connections with reading and writing also, because there's a lot of hyperbole, onomatopoeia uh, used. The text, they'll have really big text and then really small text. So um, it's great to talk about those text features, captions, illustrations, uh, amazing book. Definitely grab it if you can. Um, while you're reading your children's literature books to your students, you're going to want to stop from time to time and make connections to other texts, to students' modern lives, and to other historical events. A really good book for this is A Spy Called James. And this, uh, this James, it, he was originally James Armistead. He was a double agent during the American Revolution. He was enslaved. He, the man who enslaved him allowed him to go to the Continental Army and offer his services. James was asked by the Marquis de Lafayette to spy on the British. So he's, you know, he goes to the British pretending to be, um, you know, a tattered, a beggar, someone who was down on their luck. The British came to trust him and asked him if he would spy on the Continental Army. So he would actually pass bad information back to the British while telling the Continental Army officers the real story on what the British were up to. Um, unfortunately, when the revolution was over, James expected to be freed. Um, that was the deal that he had accepted. Sadly, he was not set free. Um, the Marquis de Lafayette, he heard what happened. He wrote a letter. The government did end up um, giving James an emancipation and allowing him uh, to go free. And James was so thankful to Lafayette that he changed his last name to Lafayette. I can make so many connections with this book um, as far as American Revolution events. Um, we can talk about the other spies that we've discussed in class. Um, we can talk about other historical events where there was spying or where things didn't turn out exactly as they'd been promised. So many connections with this book. I teach reading and writing through social studies. I think that um, social studies, of course, you know, is full of um, history and civics, but it's really nonfiction reading and information, right? Um, so teaching reading and writing through social studies is a great way to help students not only make connections, but to help that information stick. Because they're learning these historical concepts and about these historical people in several different modes. A really good book uh, to use for this is Leave It to Abigail. Abigail and, of course, her husband, John Adams, our second president, they were prolific writers and they wrote back and forth all the time. There are some really great uh, quotes from Abigail 
Um, of course, remember the ladies, that's her biggest one. But um, this book is full of writing connections that you can make and reading connections along with social studies, of course. I use children's literature books also as mentor texts. So this one is Henry and the Canons. It talks about Henry Knox. And this book focuses on his struggle to get canons to Boston. And you can imagine how heavy canons were. They didn't have vehicles to help them drag these canons. Um, so it was a huge, huge struggle. Um, this little part, this little excerpt from the book, um, what I do is I take a version of this, uh, a really boring, no details version, and I introduce it to students. And I say, it'll say something like, you know, using poles, ropes, and chains, Henry's men took the cannons over the cliffs while it was snowing. They were cold, but no one quit. Pretty boring, right? And then we look at the way the author wrote that information. Using poles, ropes, and chains, Henry's men wrestled, ooh, that's a good sparkle word, right? Wrestled the cannons over the sheerest cliffs and down the steepest heights. Those are really good adjectives. Snow swam around their boots. There's some personification. And cold chilled their hands and faces, but no one quit. So after you read that, can you see in your mind the men dragging these cannons down across the cliffs? It's snowing. Their faces are red and their hands are red because they're so cold. But they were dedicated and no one quit. This little excerpt is a really great um, mentor. We can take a piece of student's writing and using this as a guide, we can improve their writing. We can add some adjectives and add some details and some personification, onomatopoeia, whatever they need to add. Um, so definitely use your children's literature books as mentor texts. Um, Children's literature books, of course, are a great way to extend your social studies unit along with, you know, making connections and integrating with reading, writing, um, all other subjects, of course. This book, Colonial Voices, is about the outbreak of the Boston Tea Party. It's told from multiple points of view. So that standard we have on uh, various perspectives of an event. This book is perfect to help you cover that. Um, the book uh, also has uh, poetry links that you can use. Um, you can talk about uh, different types of poetry be, because of the uh, perspectives and the voices that are used in this book. Uh, some of the different perspectives are uh, the newspaper boy, the printer, an enslaved person, um, lots of different perspectives for this one event. So perfect book to use to make those integrations with reading. If you are looking for more social studies teaching advice, definitely check out my self-paced course. It is teaching social studies and it's just for upper elementary teachers. I'll put a link in the description for you so that you can um, check out the course and see if it would be a good fit for you. I welcome any comments. Um, be sure to follow this channel because I am going to post new videos as frequently as I can. Being a full-time teacher, it's, um, you know, it can be hard to get new videos up, but I am going to work really hard to share as many social studies tips with you as possible.